Hey, we're back here at Buddy Pegs with another pro parent tip. And this time we're talking about how to pick the right bike helmet for your child. Okay, so bike helmet fitting all begins with shell fit. You wanna make sure that before you really get into falling in love with a color or a particular model of helmet, it actually fits your child's head. Now, one thing that I've noticed in a lot of kids is that they tend to wear their helmets like this. Well, that's due to a couple of reasons. One, kids' heads grow way faster than you think they do. So, it's not your fault if you, uh, you know, forgot to check your kid's helmet size in a while, but it's very likely that they have outgrown the helmet that you bought them not that long ago. So when you put a helmet on a child's head, you really want to make sure that it sits down close to the eyebrows. We have an expression that we like to use called 2V1 in helmet fit. And what that begins with is we want two fingers maximum between the bottom of the helmet and the eyebrows. We want a nice V shape of the straps under the ears. I'll talk about that in a minute. And we want only one finger below the strap when you tighten down that chin strap. Okay, but back to helmet fit. So don't be surprised if your child gets into almost an adult size helmet when they're way younger than you think they would be, normally an adult size anything, um, because their heads do grow pretty quickly. They've been getting to bed on time, eating all the vegetables, and their brains are growing. So we're looking for that nice low fit on the shell. And that comes from the helmet shape itself, but also the venting. And here's why. A helmet that's nice and vented is cool, right? Air can pass through the helmet, makes sense. Well, if you go with a helmet that doesn't have a lot of venting, like this one here, the downside is on a hot day, kids might actually push the helmet back to let their head breathe a little bit. So even if the helmet fits right, they might just, you know, their tendency is to push it back so they can get a little bit more airflow. The other thing about venting is it creates a lighter helmet. You know, it doesn't mean that kids have to have a super light helmet, but they might be more prone to wear their helmet and keep it in place if it's light and feels really, you know, good on their head. So venting does come at a little bit more cost. The more holes you put in a helmet, the more expensive it is. I know that sounds weird, but they have to do more engineering in order to pass the safety standards of the same helmet that doesn't have holes in it. So more engineering equals more vents. Okay, straps and retention. That's another big thing. So helmets have these sliding buckles usually on the side where you can raise and lower the straps up under the chin, or sorry, up under the ear. So you want to make sure that you raise up those straps so that your child's ear nicely fits inside this little pocket here and the strap is not too low. So slide up that buckle and make sure it really creates a nice snug V right below their ear. Okay, the other thing I want to talk to you about is safety on helmets. Now, safety is determined by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. And mostly what they're testing for is a straight vertical drop. Can a helmet withstand a straight vertical drop from a certain height without cracking? That's the main standard. All right, well, all of the helmets are gonna pass that standard. They have to in order to be sold. But some of the helmets have an additional feature that I wanna tell you about, which is called MIPS, Multi-Impact Protection System. If you see a little yellow dot on the back of a helmet, that means it's equipped with MIPS. What is MIPS? Well, MIPS is this additional cradle on the inside of the helmet. So you see this yellow cradle in here. This yellow cradle actually moves inside the helmet. Why does it move? Well, it's been found through a lot of research that traumatic brain injuries, including mild concussions, as a traumatic brain injury, uh, they're caused by the rolling force in a crash. So if a child falls off their bike, they're gonna typically roll like that when they crash. The force of that roll creates whiplash of the brain inside the skull. Well, with MIPS, the helmet itself can roll in the opposite direction and dissipate that energy, dissipate that force, and significantly lower the risk of a traumatic brain injury. 
Um, it's an amazing technology. I never buy a helmet without MIPS. I never buy a helmet for my child without MIPS. And I strongly recommend you spend a couple of extra dollars, it's not that much more expensive, to look for a helmet that has MIPS. Oftentimes when you get into the nicer helmets, you get the whole package, right? This helmet has a ton of venting. It's got really nice straps. It has the MIPS system on the inside. And it has a nice retention strap or actually it's, a, it's sort of a rotating buckle on the back of the helmet. So there you go, when you're thinking about helmets, make sure the shell fit is correct, you've got the 2v1 helmet fit, you're thinking about the venting, go for MIPS, a little bit more expensive, but totally worth it, and uh, then start getting into, well, what color is it, and does it look good, and all those things. Kids are gonna obviously gra gravitate towards helmets that um, have the color they like, and we do try to stock a lot of different colors so that you know, we can meet those desires. Um, but I would strongly recommend staying away from all those helmets that, you know, might have a big mohawk on the top or, you know, a lot of princesses on them. Typically those helmets fit very poorly. They're very heavy. They don't have the safety protection. And I'll tell you what, we can find a princess sticker to put on any of these helmets. So come on in. We'll help you get uh, sized up for your child's helmet. That's always free. Come on down. We'd love to just help make sure that helmets are fit properly. And we'll see you down here at Buddy Peg soon.